no zone. Now, this is a place for fun field learning action. I am Janet. I am Ch Ch Charlie. And I am Marara. All right, clearly, Mara, you are definitely jolly excited, and we hope you are too. Now, we have a lot lined up. We have number fun, wordplay, and all sorts of excitement. But before we get too far, why don't we get ready? Get set and g g go to the chill out zone and meet our friends. Ra. Hello, everyone. Hello. Now, let's say a big hello to everyone watching us at home. Hello. Now, it's very good to have you with us. Let's see. John, could you tell us what today's episode is all about? It's about time. <coughs> Ahem, ahem. Uh, Marara, ahem. what's wrong? Uh, well, uh, nothing. It's just that my hand feels uh, a bit heavy. <laughs> hmm. Ah. I, I see what you're trying to do, Mara. You know what? I can see the watch, and it's actually very nice of you to have one because today's episode is all about time. And speaking of time, let's start with the buzzwords. So, Joseph, tell us what the buzzword is. Ne. Breakfast. Watch. Calendar. Excellent. Now, all of these buzzwords have to do with time. So look out for them throughout our fun and in our next adventure. Yes, right now it's time for us to go and see what our very interesting friends are up to in... Hi Luigi. Oh, hi Daphne. You got your watch. What time is it? Quarter to four. Why? Are you a little bit busy with something? Yes, I'm working out my revision plan for our English exam. Aren't you starting a little bit late? Tomorrow is the exam. No, it's not. It's... It's next Wednesday afternoon. It's definitely tomorrow. I wrote it on my calendar. Are you sure? I'm not usually wrong about these things. Yes, I remember because my calendar has a cute picture of kittens. Hi guys, where have you been? At school, revising for tomorrow's English exam. What? I was sure it was next week. I haven't even started revising. But Luigi, you have good notes and you really concentrated class. It's gonna be okay. No, it's not. I can't even remember anything. What, what, what day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday? What, what, what Tuesday? What century? It's the 21st century. Wow. Oh, well, I knew that all the time. I was just testing you. And you are a very knowledgeable young man. No, I'm not. I haven't revised for my English exam and I've just found out that it's tomorrow morning. And you wanted me to help? If you can turn back time. Yeah, that will be cool. Can you take us back to the time of dinosaurs? Zach, I don't think that would be safe for you and it wouldn't he really help Luigi. I'll be fine. Those lizards were not smart and it will give Luigi enough time to revise. Well, Zach, some of those dinosaurs were very, very smart. They could eat you for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Did you learn that from the television? No. 
I was there. You were there? Uh-huh. And once in a while, I like to pop back in time, just to see how much the times have changed. But what about my exam? I'll need some peace and quiet in the afternoon so then I can revise. Although I know I'll fail. I'll be fine. Those lizards were not smart. And it will give Luigi enough time to revise. it's such a good idea to travel back in time just to revise for an exam. How do we even know it's safe? What if Luigi got stuck? I don't think Luigi will do that badly in exam. He works so hard all year. He studies every evening until bedtime. That's true. Maybe there is a better solution. Daphne, do you have an idea? I do. We need to get back to school. Do you really think that Mr. Zippo will take Luigi back in time? That's what he said, didn't he? Not really. We, we need to build our own time machine. I don't want to be left out. You are crazy. You don't know how to build a time machine? Mr. Zippo's magic will do all the hard work. We just need to build something to travel in. Come on, let's get some old parts from the mechanic yards. I'll fail the test. Stop it. No, preparation is the best way of passing your test. You have been preparing the whole year by listening and working hard in class. Now the revisions that you're doing right now is more than enough to make sure that you pass your tests. But I won't get the best mark in my exam. Can't you just go back in time so then I have more time to revise? Time travel is very hard on the body and the mind. The last time I traveled, my body ached for a month and I could not even remember the time. And I think it should only be done with a very, very good reason. But I can't fix my mistake unless we go back in time. Everyone makes mistakes and people don't learn unless they make mistakes. So don't waste the time that you have right now by worrying too much about it. If I were you, I'd get down to studying. Come in. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. I wanted to talk to you about tomorrow's test. The English test? You shouldn't be worried about that. As long as you've been paying attention in class and have spent a little time doing your revision, then you'll be fine. We're not worried. We were just wondering if you could postpone the test to later this week. And marie I'm surprised that you're trying to get out of taking the test. I'm not. We're not asking for ourselves, we're asking for our friend who thought the test was next week. Yes, our friend, he's worried that he'll fail because he had no enough time to revise. Well, it's good that you're trying to help your friend. But still, I won't postpone it. It wouldn't be fair for those children who've done their revision. Oh no, Luigi's so upset. Luigi? Is it Luigi you're trying to help? Well, I can tell you for certain that he's not going to have any problems with the test. If he's that upset, then I can tell him so myself. We'll show you where he is. This is going to be a great toy machine. But Zach, remember, we are only traveling back in time to last week. So Luigi will have time to revise. You'll just have to repeat the last week of school. What? That's not fair. You can impress all the teachers with your knowledge. If I'd been listening, I could. Maybe this is not such a great idea. Hi, guys. What on earth are you doing? Come on, I'm trying to study. Stop making so much noise. Oh. Hi, teacher. Hello, Luigi. 
Your friends tell me that you're worried about the test tomorrow. I'm sorry, I just got messed up with the, with the date. I've never made a mistake in my life like this before. Never mind, everybody makes a mistake. And you study hard every day. You probably already know a lot more than you think. But what if I get a low mark? As long as you trade your best, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you get top marks always. Exams ain't the end of the world. Thank you, teacher. But how do I make sure that I remember about all the other tests in the future? Use a calendar. I have one with lovely pictures of cute kittens on it. See, if you have a calendar at home, uh, use it to write your test and exams on it, then it will be easier to remember. I'll do that. I'll buy you a calendar, Luigi, with the flumpy baby rabbits on it. Good. Now, try not to worry. Just do your best, and that goes to all of you. I'll see you tomorrow, and remember whatever happens, it's not the end of the world, okay? Hey, did someone say the end of the world? Well, my clock is really, really, really bad. I should wind it up. From Playhouse, this is Queasy Quiz. What is a good way to remember when your tests are? A good way to remember when your tests are is by buying a calendar and marking it. It's definitely tomorrow. I wrote it on my calendar. What is the most important thing when your tests are coming up? Preparation is the best way of passing your tests. You have been preparing the whole year by listening and working hard in class. Now the revisions that you're doing right now is more than enough to make sure that you pass your tests. Quizzy is really clever and you know, the way he does his questions, I hope you got them right. Now, what about you? Did you get all of those questions right? Yes! Brilliant! Now, even here at home, we also hope that you got them correct. You know, I feel very clever today. And I can't wait for Teacher Pendo to answer all her questions. Well, Mara, you don't have to wait much longer. <laughs> oh. oh, we know what that means. It's Teacher Pendo time. It's time for... Hello everyone and welcome to Cool Words. In today's lesson, we shall be learning about time. And I have my big clock with me here to help us in this. Now to start us off, can somebody show me how the hands of a clock move? Ooh, 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 teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. They move like this. That's right, Marara. Now this is how the hands of a clock move. And we call this a clockwise movement. Now the long hand counts time in minutes while the short hand counts time in hours. Now can somebody tell me when does a new day start? Yes, Stacy. A new day starts at 12 midnight. Aha, very good. And how do you know that? Because when we are coming to a new year, we usually do a countdown and when the clock strikes midnight, we wish people a happy new year. You're right, Stacy, and that's a very good example that you have used. Ooh, 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 Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I thought a new day starts when the sun rises in the morning. Teacher Pendo, you mean I was wrong? As Stacy said, a new day starts at midnight when the two hands of the clock are pointing at 12, like this. As the name suggests, it is usually in the middle of the night. John, what time do you get up? I usually get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, teacher Pendo. <laughs> Very good. Now can you please show us 6 o'clock? Okay, and you will need to move the short hand of the clock from 12 to 6. Please show to everyone at home. Okay, well done, John. Now notice that 6 o'clock is a few hours after midnight, Marara. Therefore, it cannot be the same time when a new day begins. You may see the sun rise at this time, but remember, the new day began when the time was 12 midnight. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. I think it makes sense. And what time do you wake up? 
Well, I wake up at quarter past six. Now to help you all understand this, I have an orange which is already cut into four equal parts like this, okay? So I have my four equal parts. Now if I remove this part of the orange, what shape is created by the space left? Yes, Joseph? The shape is a quarter. Aha, that is correct. Now that is the same idea when we say the time is quarter past the hour. Where do you think the minute hand will point at that time? Yes, gift. I think it points at three. It will point at three. three. Yes, very good. So the minute hand will point at three. Now, can somebody show me the time quarter past six on the clock? Yes, Stacy. It, it, it is just the same. Uh -huh, very good. It remains the same. I wake up at quarter past six and I eat my breakfast at seven o'clock. Now, can somebody set the time for us for seven o'clock? Yes, gift. Go right ahead. Set for us for seven o'clock. And when it is o'clock, so can you show everyone at home what you have? Okay, well done. When it is o'clock, the minute hand points to 12. Now, Marara, what time do you arrive at school in the um, morning? Well, I arrive at uh, quarter to eight each morning. Aha, uh -huh. now where do you think the minute hand, which is the long hand, should point to show that time, Marara? Well, I think it should point at nine and the hour hand should point just before eight. Just before eight. Okay, well done, you are right. Now when the time is quarter to, the minute hand points at nine, while the hour hand points just before the next hour. Can somebody tell me why we say quarter to? Yes, John? Is it because there is a quarter left to the hour? Aha, you're absolutely right. Now going back to my orange, notice how it looks when I remove these three sides to show the time has passed. I am now left with a quarter. It is important to note the difference between quarter past and quarter to. Speaking of which, it is time to take a short break. Be sure to join us later on for more on cool words. Right now though, it's time to take a trip with my speedy. That's right, it's time for Out There. Time. Time is the order of events from the past, the present, and the future. We can tell time by looking at a watch or even the clock. In life, time passes by very quickly. We all go through different times of our lives, from the day we are born, when we celebrate our first birthday, the first year in our calendar. And year after year, we grow old. And imagine, after some time, we will graduate from college, get a job, get married, and eventually we will become old. When someone gets old, he or she is usually unable to take care of themselves. And they need someone to take care of them. And that's why today we are going to visit a special place, a home for the aged and see how they spend their day. Come on, good people, let's go! This is Mji Wahuruma. It is a government institution run by the City Council of Nairobi. It was started so many years ago and has over 40 old people who live here. <laughs> These are very good friends of mine. I've brought a few gifts for them and I am sure they will enjoy. Located in Kiambu County, 
Chalo, who is one of the people in charge here, tells me that this place houses all the people from all corners of Kenya. Some, like Sabina here, come all the way from Kisi, and others all the way from Trukana. Hey, <laughs> how old are you? All of my friends here are 60 years and above. Can you believe it? But they had no one to take care of them. That's why this home is their new home now. Just like in school, they also have a timetable of how they spend their day. It's early morning, and Ken tells me I'm just in time for breakfast. Oh, the tea is boiling. This looks very hot. I can't wait to have a cup though. <laughs> I love tea. But first, let's fetch some sugar. Hey, do you love your tea with sugar or without? My friend Ken tells me that some of them prefer their tea without sugar. So I have to divide the tea and put it in a different bucket. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This will be so sweet. Can't wait to have some. The tea is now ready, but there's something that I'm missing. Oh, yes, the bread! <laughs> My friends who live here are not as strong, so they need food which is rich in energy. That is why we are going to serve them tea with this bread, which is an energy-giving food. White bread, brown bread. Everything is ready now. Let's go serve breakfast. Come on, good people, come with us. I will also join them for some tea and bread. Even though they are old, just like at home, they also have everyday chores. This is my friend Madina. She is an employee of the city council. She is the housekeeper in charge of the women's hostel. She has been working here for the past 14 years. That is a very long time. But she tells me she enjoys every bit of our work here, as these people here are like family to her. Madina assists this group with daily chores like making the beds, serving food, cleaning the rooms, among other chores. For the women, those who are able, help with minor duties like preparing cereals for lunch. And for the men, those who are still strong enough help in the farm. Like my friends here, Macau and Kanyoro. They are showing me around the shamba. Come on, good people, let's take a walk. Wow, look at the maize. It has grown so tall and healthy. Come, good people, come with me. <laughs> And this is a very beautiful banana plantation as well. Macau tells me this is because they take proper care of the shamba here. Macau is showing me around the shamba. The bananas are quite big as well. Oh, <laughs> one of them is actually ready to be picked. I am so excited. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is a big one. So where does the rest of the stock go? Macau says that nothing here goes to waste. As this, they used to feed the cows. Surprised? Come on, let's go and see how they do it. It's quite heavy. I can't wait for the bananas to ripen so that I can eat them. That is my friend Kanyoro. He prefers to spend his time with two of his best friends, the cows. It's now time to feed the cows. <laughs> Done. The washing? 
Done. Cooking. Done. Everyone has finished their chores, and now it's time for lunch. It is very important for everyone, including the old, to eat balanced diet so that they can stay healthy and strong. I am told that after lunch, it's time to relax or even have an afternoon nap. Some sit and tell stories, and they have so many stories to tell, right from their childhood to now. As they say, old is gold. Believe it or not, today, from the old people, I have learned priceless lessons. Please spend your time wisely, and let's all take care of the old ones. Do not ignore them. So until next time, goodbye. Goodbye. Now, our speedy always knows how to take us to fun places. I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, definitely. I, I actually really enjoyed it. But Marara, you also like to take us to some very fun places as well. Oh yes, talking of which. According to my watch, it's time for a game! Ooh, you know what guys, I love playing with numbers and I am so sure that you do too. So let's get on with it. It's time for us to play our exciting numbers game. Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome! And it's time to dive into the number pool and have fun with the number. Yes, welcome Tim. Now today it's all about addition. Now I have one question for you. Are you ready? Yes! Alright, so what you have to do is roll the dice. And once you have rolled the dice, you must add up the two numbers that are on the top of the dice. For example, in this case, it would be 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. Then, run to the number pool and find the answer hidden amongst the balls. And then give that to Janet. That's right. Now, after your turn, you have to go back to the team, tag the next team member who will go up to Charlie to roll the dice. Now, remember, you only have 30 seconds to roll the dice, find the solution in the number pit, and give it to Janet. That's right. Now, if you get all the additions right, you get to take away these fabulous books back to your school. And of course, not forgetting that we have a very special prize for each one of you. Now, for you watching us at home, I hope that you're ready to join in. For you, the number team, are you ready? Yes! No, Charlie, that's not enough. Tim, are you ready? Yes! Yeah, that's good. So, let's roll the dice. Stacy, you're up first. Come on and roll the dice. All right, Stacy's about to roll and she rolls and it's a... Uh... It's a five and a one. Five and a one. All right, what's five plus one? Six. Go, 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 look go, 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 go to the pool. Find, find it, find it. It's six. Find six. six. Find the number six. 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 Find the number six. six. No, Wait, find the number six. Give it to Janet. Can you there see? You go. Give it to Janet. Give it to Janet. Thank you. Go tag the next member. Go, go, tag go. the next person. Who's next? Joseph. Joseph. You're up next. And roll Joseph. Nice. Joseph is about to roll and he rolls. Uh, two and a one. Uh, two and a one. Four. What's two plus one? Three. Three. Go. Find three. three. On, find, find the three. Find it. Find it. Find the answer. Find the answer. See, find the answer. Find the answer. Joseph. Joseph. That's it. Well, All right. right. Who's next? Gift. 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 There you go. All right. Gift, Gift is about to roll. And it rolls. And it's uh, six and a three. Six and three. Six plus three. Nine. 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 Go look oh, for no, no. a nine. Go look for a nine. Find nine. Find nine. Find nine. Give it to Gift. Give it to Gift. Bring it. Oh, give it to Janet. Give it to Janet. That's it. All right. All right. John. It's your turn now. Roll the dice. And John rolls in the seats, sir. Uh, 
Woods are two and a one. Two and a one. Three. Find, three. Yes, that's three. it. Find it. Find, find it. Find, three. Find, three. Three. Find three. Find three. Find three. Find three. Find three. Come on, find it. Find it. Find it. Look for it. Three. Give it to John. John. Oh, there you go. And time is up. All right. Very well done. Time is up. Now let's solve this sums. Stacy, you came up here, rolled the dice, and you rolled a five and one. Five plus one is what? Six! Oh, this sounds very sure. Let's see if that's what you gave us. I think you gave us a nine and oh, oh, six. 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 Moving on to the next person, Joseph. Now, Joseph, you rolled two and one. Pretty easy, I must say. Two plus one? Three. Three. Two plus one? Three! Three. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, 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 it's a three. That was easy. Very well done. You're doing great so far. The third person was gift. You rolled a six and a three. Six plus three is what? Nine. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, I, I don't know. Let's, Let's see. see. least was John. John, you rolled another two and one, which is what? Two plus one is what? Three! Three. Uh, are you sure we had enough threes in there? I don't know, I don't know. This one, let's just okay, find let's out. Let's find check. Out. Let's check. Lucky guys! Yay! Wow, all of you worked so hard. Very well done. You got all the sums correct. Another clap for you guys. Can only mean one thing. Team leader Stacy, come on up and take these books for your school. Congratulations. Here are your books. Show the world your books. A round of applause. And that is not all. I have a special prize for each one of you. Come on up and take your prizes. Come on, go take your prizes. Go, go, go. Ah. Chelly, is it just me or number four is just too much fun? This is like the most fantastic <laughs> thing. I wanted to dive in at some I'm point. I'm actually sweating, meaning it's time for us to move on to something else. Let's go and visit with our friend Dunia and see what she's up to. It's our world. <laughs> everyone, my name is Dunia. Welcome to our world. Now, can you guess what wild animal we are visiting today? Here is a hint. It is very, 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 oh, very tall. In fact, they are the tallest mammals in the world. You guessed it, it's a giraffe. Giraffe can be found in most parts of Kenya. They have beautiful patchwork coats and a very long neck. They are also known for their long, slimy tongues, which can be up to two feet long. How amazing is that? Their tongues help the giraffe reach high up into the trees to reach their food and use them to dive in between thorns and just pick off the green leaves. They also have hard skin inside their mouths, so they can eat thorny plants like acacia trees, which is one of their favorite foods. Boy, do they like their food. They chew and chew and chew all day long. They only sleep about 30 minutes a day. Giraffe also have horns. Some people think that originally giraffe had antlers, and over time, they have evolved into these small horns, which are called ossicons. Giraffe are peaceful creatures. However, they do use their horns to play fight. It looks a bit like this. The giraffes swing their necks and prod each other with their horns. Giraffe also have two ears on the side of their heads. And their tongues are so long, they can clean their ears with their tongues. Yuck! They have two nostrils on the end of their nose. 
and they have two toes on the end of their very long legs. Giraffes sometimes sit down. However, they do not do this often as it makes it harder to escape predators like a lion. This is because it takes them a while to stand up. They can run fast for long distances, which is useful to escape predators. With a combination of long legs and a long neck, giraffe can measure up to 18 feet tall. That's five and a half meters. Hang on, that is the equivalent of three and a bit of me. Yikes, that's really tall. Can you calculate how many of you would reach the same height as a giraffe? Their necks are also very strong. They can be used to pull off branches and reach into the bushes to select their favorite bits. Believe it or not, this is a very young giraffe, maybe just a few months old. A baby giraffe is born about six feet tall. The mother giraffe gives birth while standing up. So when the baby giraffe is born, it falls five to six feet to the ground. Ouch! Unlike humans, they can stand up and walk in two hours after being born. Clever creatures. Their beautiful patchwork coats are to help keep them hidden when they are standing in trees. Every single giraffe has a different pattern on their coat. Giraffe can go for days without drinking water and can live up to 26 years. In Kenya, we have three types of giraffe. There is the reticulated giraffe. It has dark browny red patches outlined by bright white lines. They are mostly found in northern Kenya. Then we have the Maasai giraffe with jagged edged patches of dark chocolate on a yellowish background. They are found in southern Kenya and are the largest type of giraffe. Then there is the Rothschild giraffe that can look similar to the Maasai with brown patches and creamy lines. But you can tell if it's a Rothschild by looking at its legs. They look like they're wearing long white socks very fashionable. This is the most endangered giraffe, which means there are not many left in the wild. Only a couple hundred remain because of poachers killing them for bushmeat. This is very sad, as they are beautiful and peaceful creatures. Join me next week for our next wild animal. See ya! Nia is so interesting. I mean, she makes the world so magical. I know what you mean. And for you at home, I hope that you enjoyed learning about our world. That's right, because we have so much more coming up in a little bit. Right now, though, we're going on a short break. Oh, good, because uh, I need to sleep a bit. Uh, wait, what? Uh, Marara, didn't you get any sleep yesterday when the sun went down? Well, I, uh, I did, but it's just that I was watching the, the star. Oh. Oh, this. Come on, Ma, are you serious? Okay, listen, you're only allowed to go for a short nap because we have to be back right here on the No Zone for more fun and learning. So keep it here. Hello. Now, as you know, this is the No Zone. And as always, we have a lot of fun while we learn. Now, do you remember everything that you have been learning so far? If not, do not worry because we have something very special just for you. Now, we have a free, fun-packed booklet that comes with everything we have learned throughout Term 1. The question is, do you want one? And if you do want one, all you have to do is just ask your parents to help you send us a text with your name and address to Three zero six zero six. So do not be left out. Come on, get on texting on three zero six zero six. Oh man, I missed a spot. What? Did... Uh, it's not clean. It's not clean. It's oh, not wait, wait, clean. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You missed another one. Where? Yeah, there, there, there. There? Yes, yeah, yeah. There? yeah. Oh. Uh.
Welcome. Marara. Marara! This is like a drama, it's like a video. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Whoa. You know what? Welcome back to the No Zone, where today's episode is all about time. Now, why don't we jump straight into it and remind our friends watching us at home what the buzzwords are. Joseph? Ne. Breakfast. Watch. Excellent. Now, make sure that you look out for these buzzwords throughout all of our adventures. Whoa, Charlie. Huh? It is such a hot day. Ooh, talking of hot, I know what else is really hot. I know what that means. It's time for... Hot Hello everyone. Hello teacher Pendo. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Today we are going to learn some more about addition. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves what we learned last week. Now can anyone tell me what addition is? Yes Hilda? Addition is when we put together. Very good. Now last week we learned that there are two ways to add numbers. Would anyone like to remind the class as well as those at home the ways that you can add these two numbers? So who wants to remind us how to add these two numbers? Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes, Marara? Well, you first add uh, 30 plus 30 uh -huh. to give us 60. Okay. And then you add 2 plus 5 to give us 7. Mm -hmm. And then we add 60 plus 7. And the answer is 67. Very good. So it's all about adding the tens and then the ones. All right. Now, what about the second method? Who wants to tell us about the second method? Yes, Peter? You can also use Columns. Very good. Nice attempt. So you can also use the columns. Now, so we add the ones column first, okay? So 2 plus 5 gives us 7, okay? And then we add the tens column. So 3 plus 3 gives us 6. So we get 67. Okay, now remember to make sure that the numbers are in their correct place value. The ones in the ones column and the tens in the tens column. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Now that is really simple. That's good to know, Marara. Okay, now today we are going to introduce a third column, the hundreds column. Okay. So I'm going to reveal sums with the hundred column. Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Those numbers are too big. Now, now, Marara, don't worry. Okay, don't be scared of how they look. As long as you understand the two ways of adding the numbers. You can add any number no matter how big it looks. Now, let's start with the first sum. As you can see, we have three columns. We have the ones column, we have the tens column and we have the hundreds column. As always, we start with the ones. Okay, so we are going to start with the ones column. So six plus three gives us nine. Okay, two plus one gives us three. Okay, and then seven plus two gives us nine. nine. Very good. Oh, Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. You are right. It's actually not as hard as I thought it would be. Aha, uh -huh, that's good, Marara. Now let's try the second sum step by step together. Okay, so here is our second sum. So what do we do first? Collins, do you want to try? What do we do first here? We add the ones columns, mm -hmm. one plus eight is nine. Aha, very good. One plus eight gives us nine. 
Excellent. Okay, who wants to tell us what we do next? Yes, Joan? We add the 10th column, mm -hmm. which is 2 plus 7 is 9. Very good. Okay. And finally, what do we do next? Yes, Hilda? We add the 100th column, mm -hmm. 3 plus 1 is 4. Aha, well done. So we get 499. Ooh, 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 yes. Uh, can I try add the second sum using the other method? Go right ahead, Marara. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. 300 mm -hmm. plus 100 mm -hmm. will give us 400. Mm -hmm. Very good. And 70 plus 20 mm -hmm. will give us 90. Excellent. And 8 plus 1 mm -hmm. will give us 9. So the answer is... 499. Well done. So we get 499. Well done. Excellent. Now let's move on to the next sum. Okay, 538 plus 246. So we will still do it the same way. So we add the ones column. 8 plus 6 gives us 14. Okay, but... The 14 is too big to fit here. So what we do is write the 4 here and then we carry the 1 to the tens column. Well, Teacher Pendo, I, 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 I don't understand. Well, let me just explain to you. It's like getting a new pair of shoes. When your foot grows too big to fit in your old shoes, you go out and buy a new pair of shoes that has more space to fit you more comfortably. In the same way, the number 14 is too big to fit in the ones column. And that's why we, some of it has to move to the tens column. So that's why we put the four here and then we carry one to the tens column. Do you understand now? Yes. yes! Very good. So we add the 4 plus 3, which gives us 7, and then we add the 1 that we carried over from the 1's column. So that gives us 8. Okay, and then we add 5 plus 2 in the 100's column, which gives us 7. So we get 784. So let's work out the next sum together. 332 plus 187. So what do we do first, Collins? We add the ones columns, 7 plus 2 equals 9. Mm -hmm, very good. So 7 plus 2 gives us 9. Well done. Okay, what do we do next? Yes, Joan? We add the tens column. Three plus eight equals 11. Very good. So 11 is too big to fit in the tens column. So what we do is write one here and then we carry one. Ah, you ni marasa na fakujibu? No, no, no. And then we carry one to this side. Very good. So the 11 is too big to fit in the tens column. So what should we do? Um, so we write one in the tens column mm -hmm. and then we carry the extra one mm -hmm. to the hundreds column. Very good. And what do we do next, Marara? Uh, we add the hundreds column. Mm -hmm. So that is three mm -hmm. plus one, mm -hmm. which is four. Okay, what is Marara forgetting? Peter, do you want to tell us what Marara is forgetting? Yes, mm -hmm. he's forgetting the one we carried over. Mm, okay, Marara. You see, you've forgotten the one we carried over from the tens column. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot, but I understand now. Mm -hmm. So what do we get? That's four. Mm -hmm. Plus the one that we carried? Five. So we put five here. Well done, everyone. Now be sure to practice as much as you can at home because the more you practice, the easier it becomes. And that's it for today's Hot Number. Be sure to join us next time. Right now, though, let's see what's happening in the Creative Zone.
Welcome back to the Creative Zone. Now, today we're going to be dancing. That's why I'm here with my man, Semi. So, Semi, yes. tell me, what dance are we doing today? Yes, today we are doing the Maasai dance mm -hmm. from the Maasai people who live in the Rift Valley of Kenya. Oh, nice, nice. You know, I actually know a few Maasai moves, but yeah. they, are, they are kind of old, they are outdated. Yes. So, uh, this is what it's like. It's a, mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. going to stop there. I'm going why? to leave it to the professional. That's why you're here. But uh, for you at home, if you're watching, stand up, have fun, enjoy yourself, join in with Semi. But I will be heading back to the chill out zone. Okay, <laughs> let's get straight into it. So we are going to teach you the Maasai dance. With me are my beautiful dancers who are going to join into the fun. Okay, so we are going to start by our upper body what is called contraction. And five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I hope you're getting it. Now we are going to show you how to jump. And the simple jump is put your feet together, put your feet together, and we bend our knees a little bit, and we jump up. So we have a small routine that we've made about the Maasai dance. And five, six, seven, eight. Ah. Fire! Oh. 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 Fire! Oh. Ah. Fire! Oh. Mm. So that's it. I hope you guys had fun. We are going to continue dancing as usual while you are going to join Charlie, Marara, and Janet in the chill out zone. Ah. Now, what a creative piece! But I can be much better than that. Oh, of course you can, Marara. But we are all having fun being creative. Maya, it's not a competition, but I know what is. It's time for us to have fun with letters. It's time for... Stories! Animal. Animal. Chapter. Building. Narrow. Building. Respect. Respect. Deep. Deep. Vegetable. Work. 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 Welcome to Spell It! This is the place where we have fun with our letters and our words. That's true. Now, Joan, Collins, Hilda, and Peter, you are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's No Zone Spelling Competition. That's right. Now, the winner of today's competition will win the school a No Zone Dictionary and a very special prize for themselves. Now, each contestant has just 25 seconds to spell correctly as many words as they can. If you would like a word repeated, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Are the rules clear? Yes. All of today's words will be coming from our topic of... Time! <laughs> well, since uh, Marara's feeling musical, let's not waste another second. Joanne, you're up first. Come on down and step into the spotlight. <laughs> Joanne, your 25 seconds starts now. Day. D A Y. Watch. W A T C H. Supper. C U W P E R. Sleep. S L W E P. Sunrise. S U N R I C E. Calendar. C A L 
E M D E Joan, well very done. well done. Step on back. Come on back, Joan. Come on back. You did very well. Collins, it's your turn now. Come on down and step into the spotlight. There you go. Collins, your 25 seconds starts now. Noon. N double O N. Clock. C L O C K. Hour. H O U R. Lunch. L U N C H. Bedtime. B E D T I M E. Minute. Pass. Dawn. Repeat. Dawn. All right. Well done, Collins. Collins. Very well done. Come on back. Hilda, it's your turn now. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Hilda, your 25 seconds starts now. June. Sleep it. June. Pass. Meal. Meal. Night. N I G H T. Evening. E -A V E N I N G. All right, Hilda. Well done, Hilda. Peter, it's your turn now. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Peter, your 25 seconds starts now. Lit. N A T E. Time. T I M E. Week. W E A K. Morning. M O R N I N G. Ali. E A R L I. All right, Peter, well time is done, up. Time Peter. is up. Well done, all of you. Charlie, please reveal the score. All right, <laughs> here we go. I'll start with Peter. <coughs> Peter, you spelled three words correctly. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Hilda, although you spelled it correctly, you ran out of time spelling evening, but you still spelled two words correctly. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Collins, you passed on the word minute, but you spelled five words correctly. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Which leaves us with Joanne. Joanne, you spelled one, two, three words correctly. Which means that the winner of today's Nose on Spelling competition with five words spelled correctly is Colin! Step forward, Colin. Come on. Congratulations. You are today's Nose on Spelling champion. Here's your dictionary. Show everyone at home your dictionary. A round of applause. <laughs> All right. Well done, Collins. Very well done. And of course, you don't go home empty-handed because this is no zone and you have spelled so many words correctly. And for that, you get storybooks. So come on up and get your storybooks. Come, come. Go get Good your one. storybooks. Okay. Go get your storybooks. All right, now after that, sizzling round of spelling. It's time for us to chill. Definitely, and who better to chill with than to join Teacher Pendo for cool words. Cool words, cool, cool words. Welcome back. Now I would like you to think about some of the things that you do in the morning or at night. You will then set the clock to show the time. For example, every day I prepare supper at six o'clock. So every day I prepare my supper at six o'clock. Now who would like to go next? 
Yes, gift? My mother prepares supper at quarter, quarter past seven in the evening. Quarter past seven in the evening. So show us quarter past seven in the evening. Quarter past seven in the evening. Okay, so show everyone at home. Quarter past seven. Sorry. Okay, well done. Someone else? Yes, Joseph? At six o'clock in the evening, I help my mother in the house. So show us six o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's very good that you help your parents at home. Well done. Someone else? Ooh, 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 teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Well, I got to bed at 9 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. So that means the long hand will be at 12 uh -huh. and the short hand will be at 9. Okay. So 9 o'clock. Excellent. Someone else? John, what time do you do your homework? I do my homework quarter past seven in the evening. Quarter past seven in the evening. Show us quarter past seven in the evening. Very good. Okay. Someone else? What about you, Stacy? Yes? I comb my hair in the morning at half past six. Mm -hmm. Show us half past six. Okay, show everyone at home, Stacy. Okay, well done, everyone. Now, next on the board are some sentences with some words missing. Now, I would like you to choose a word that we have used in our discussion that is appropriate to complete the sentences. I will read the sentence before you give me the answer. Okay, so Luca ate his breakfast in the... Yes, Joseph? Morning. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Ate his breakfast in the morning. Well done. I do my homework in the... Yes, John? Evening. Aha, uh -huh, very good. I do my homework in the evening. Oh, teacher Pendo, I also do my homework in the evening. Mm-hmm, that's good. My mother prepares dinner before... Yes, gift? Sunset. Before sunset. Well done. Next sentence. Dash is a time when the sun rises in the sky. Yes, Stacy. Sunrise is the time when the sun, sun rises in the sky. Very good. Sunrise is a time when the sun rises in the sky. And the last sentence. The dark hours before sunset and the next morning are called. Yes, John. Night. Excellent. Night. Well done, everyone. You've done so well. Now, I'd like you to remember to always keep time to avoid being late to school, at home, and in different situations. Unfortunately, we've run out of time for today, but timely coming up is something that you're all going to enjoy. And uh, what is that, Teacher Bendo? It's time for Story Zone. This is the story of Muyoka's stopped watch. Enjoy. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Muyoka who was always on time for everything every day. She never missed breakfast and always left the house in good time to get to school. Muyoka's most valued possession was her calendar. The calendar had been given to her one day by a strange elderly woman. Muyoka had never seen this woman before or since. Each month showed a beautiful picture of countryside from somewhere in the world. Soaring snow-capped mountains, pristine sweeping beaches, and clean bright rivers. Just when Muyoka thought the next picture could not be more beautiful, she turned the page, only to find that it was. Muyoka hung the calendar above her bed, so it was the first thing she saw every morning. 
But this particular morning, things went wrong for Muyoka. Her shiny digital watch had stopped in the night, which meant that her alarm didn't go off. She was late. She missed breakfast that day and had no time to pack something for lunch. She didn't even stop to look at her calendar. And although her p pet cat meowed and meowed, meow, meow, she ignored him. She ran to school as fast as she could and made it to assembly just in time, which was just as well, as this was also the day that she was being presented with the award for the most punctual student in school. Imagine if she had been late for that. Back home that afternoon, Muyoka was surprised to see her cat sitting in the same place he had been when she left for school. Normally, he would have been off on an adventure somewhere. The cat immediately started meowing again. Meow, meow. But his attempts to warn Muyoka did not work. Muyoka could not see what her pet cat had seen, that something was moving inside the picture on the calendar. The cat had seen whatever it was hiding behind a rock on the snow-capped mountain scene. Muyoka shooed her cat away. Shoo, shoo. She had homework to do, but she was also tired from the effort of running to school that morning. Muyoka looked up at her calendar and found that she could not take her eyes off the beautiful picture. She gazed into the scene until she felt her eyelids sliding shut and her head dropping. Muyoka shook her head to wake herself, but to her surprise, she was no longer sitting at her desk. The cold air hit her, and she was shocked to find that she was standing inside the mountain scene in the calendar. Then out from behind a rock, there stepped a giant, almost as tall as a small mountain, and with the eyes the size of serving plates. He was wearing a long coat and warm boots. Muyoka tried to run. She tripped over and scraped her knee, but scrambled to her feet again. She looked over her shoulder. The giant was catching up with her, and with each step he took, the ground shook. It felt like an earthquake. The giant called to Muyoka not to be afraid. He had something to give her. His voice was soft and kind, so Muyoka stopped running and turned with trembling knees to face the giant. He bent down and handed her something wrapped in a white cloth. Open it, he said. Muyoka opened the cloth and inside was a new digital watch, exactly like her own, the one that had stopped. Suddenly, the watch started beeping and flashing. Its alarm was going off. Muyoka found herself back in the small bedroom that she shares with her little brother. Her pet cat was winding himself in and out of her ankles. Was it just a dream? She looked down at the watch on her wrist. It was showing the right time and the alarm was going off, the one that she had set to remind herself about the afternoon choir practice. She ran out of the front door. Her pet cat looked up at the calendar. And do you know what he saw? He saw the giant waving back at him from behind a rock. The end. From Story Zone, this is Quizzy Quiz. Who gave Muyoka the calendar? The elderly woman gave Muyoka the calendar. What does Muyoka get in the prize for? Muyoka was getting a prize for being the most punctual student. Quizzy is so wheezy with his questions. You're right, Mara, that's very true. Now, for you at home, we hope that you enjoyed it as well. Now, what about our friends? Did you enjoy what you saw? Yeah! All right, we're very glad that you had fun while you learned. And thank you so much for coming out to help us with today's show. Oh, well, is it time to go already? Sadly, it is, Marar, but do not worry because we will be back here at the same time next week for more fun and learning. So keep it tuned right here. Where the fun never ends. Come on, everyone. Let's say goodbye. Bye! Hello. Now, as you know, this is the Nozo. And as always, we have a lot of fun while we learn. 
Now, do you remember everything that you have been learning so far? If not, do not worry because we have something very special just for you. Now, we have a free, fun-packed booklet that comes with everything we have learned throughout Term 1. The question is, do you want one? And if you do want one, all you have to do is just ask your parents to help you send us a text with your name and address to 30606. So do not be left out. Come on, get on texting on 30606. Oh man, I missed a spot. What? Just... Uh, it's not clean. It's not clean. It's oh, not right. clean. Wait, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. You missed another one. Where? Yeah, there, there, there. There? Yes, yeah, there? yeah. 